My son, come quickly. The five kingdoms have conspired against us. Welcome back everyone, Mingfu here, and today we have the game Tales of Glory. It's developed and published by Blacktail Games. This is a VR game that has been in early access since May 30th, 2017. Fast forward three years, a lot of updates and feedback from the community, Tales of Glory leaves early access, and to celebrate, they were giving away free keys on Discord. And as you may have guessed, I want a key. Just as I was about to give up after four to five hours sitting in the chat room. Tales of Glory plays like a lot of other VR fighting games. Grab a weapon, flail it around, and kill whatever you're aiming at. The game is set in a medieval period and lets you fight a lot of enemies with a lot of weapons. I believe there are 40 in total ranging from daggers, swords, two-handed axes to crossbows. Hitting the enemy enough times will put them out of their misery and making the right contact you can remove a limb or their head. I did spend some time just whacking away at a corpse just to see what happens. The game has a few modes to play such as quick battle, custom battle, and arena. There's even a campaign thrown in and according to the developer it's 30 plus hours. The game modes are exactly what they sound like. Quick battle just randomly sets the battlefield and the troops. You could be outnumbered or you could outnumber the enemy. It's just random. Custom lets you set everything up like how many cavalry, soldiers, lancers, and archers. Within this mode lies other ways to play such as protect the lord which I could not get to work correctly, convoy, escape, infiltration, and hold place. And that's hold place, not hold in place. I take a guess and say battle mode is probably what most will play. You can even set the difficulty of the AI and if you want to defend or attack. When the level starts, you can load up your weapons and stow them on your person. One on each shoulder, two on the hip, and I think that's about it. I could not get the shield to stick anywhere on my body, so I just kept it in my hand during gameplay. When ready, just raise both hands or leave the staging area. Now it gets a little interesting because you can now give orders to your men. It varies by the VR system, but it's pretty much like this. Bring up the laser pointer, select one or a group of soldiers, push another button and open the wheel selection, then tell them what to do. I use the simple commands such as follow, auto and engage. It's really finicky and sometimes I felt like my forces just ignored what I said. There's also an overhead view so you can see most of the battlefield. If available you can mount a horse and take on the enemy that way. You can get on and off just like in Mountain Blade. Combat is Alright, but I felt like the enemy was like jello when I was hitting them. I felt like if I hit the enemy in the head or the arm really hard, it should disconnect, but it just doesn't happen. Again, this is like it's random. <laughs> I do believe the combat could be a little better as the enemy can run inside each other in large groups, which makes it really hard to hit them. I also had a shield get stuck on my hand, and at times I could not pick my weapon off the ground. There's also times when I was dual wielding my weapons and they totally disappeared. The sounds are good, although sometimes when the enemy dies, the sound is kinda tinny. 
it's no biggie and I can get over that. The music fits the time period of the game and I didn't have a problem with that, although I wish there were more tracks. We need more tracks. I didn't have much time in the campaign and from what I've played, you can send spies and if they get caught, you know what? Their head comes off. You can recruit soldiers from different towns, perform commerce and attack different factions. It looks well put together and it may look familiar to you if you've played any micromanagement game before. One thing to note is that you will not have many weapons starting out and they have to be bought just like your army. You can talk to the townspeople through a menu system to perform missions, listen to rumors or help them in some way. You will, depending on what you are doing, be paid and possibly gain a reputation status. The game has the typical setup for VR systems like if you are left handed, right handed, snap turn or smooth turn etc. The graphics tab was a little confusing and I kept the graphics quality to normal and the foliage density to low. There's no sense going higher as we are using a 1050 Ti. On the later half of the game I used the graphical setting of no and foliage quality set to none. I kid you not those are the lowest settings. It was very hard to benchmark this game but to make it easy the temps were in the 80s for both the GPU and CPU and the average FPS was around 55. All in all the game is really good but like most games it's not perfect. The game takes longer to load than usual, some sound effects are not heard, you don't have any type of feedback telling you how much armor or health you have left besides the screen turning black. Fighting can become jittery, holding two handed weapons, enemies come at you in mobs which might be realistic I'm not sure but it's very hard to take them out you know when you're fighting one two or three at a time some goodies that I like about the game is when the enemy starts to retreat you know the timer will run down they turn into wimps and can be defeated easily the battle cries of the soldiers on the battlefield sound pretty awesome enemies begging not to be killed enemies limping when they are hurt and blood and decapitation you know that's given there's more, but it would take too long to list. I know I got it for free, but the price should be around, in my opinion, $20 to $25, just to help offset some of the negatives of the game. Tales of Glory joins the pack of other fighting games in VR, such as Blade and Sorcery, Gorn, and Until You Fall, and can only get better if the developer sticks with it. As of making this video, the developer is working on mod support and asking any experienced modders that want to help to contact them on Discord. The developer also stated, as stated yesterday on Discord, official release is only a new beginning and I'll continue to update the game as frequently as possible. This is pretty telling and shows that the developer is committed to the game, which is really awesome. Anyway. In closing, if the video helped you, feel free to like and subscribe. There's also a list of my hardware in the description box, and if you would like to support the channel, buy from the links I have provided. And I'll see you next time. Mean Poo, out. Oh! 
Wait! Come, come with me! 